Hey, I'm Fred. And I'm Ant. And this is Create a Generation. Create a Generation of Hype. All right, Frederico, what is happening this week? This week we're chatting with Mars from the Amazing, which is a storytime animation channel. Essentially, it was like a bunch of conditions, right? Which one? One of them was I had to be anonymous, so my parents didn't see it and find out and stuff. And my parents found out. They're like, oh, you're, you put shame on the family. And he tells us what it's like to be a YouTuber that specializes in animation and difficulties around that. Before we get started, just a quick reminder that we have Changer College, which is going to help you become an even better YouTube creator. And you can find it at changercollege.com. That's C-H-A-N-G-E-R college.com. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Mars from the Amazing. Welcome to Today? the Creator Generation. How are you going, Ant? Good, mate. <laughs> having a yarn? We're here to have a great yarn. So, Mars, <laughs> the best way to start these episodes is for me to shut up and for you to introduce yourself and your channel. Yeah, you want me to look at the camera to do it? Like, like, like cut straight If you to. want to, but so, it's no. mostly an <laughs> podcast. Yeah, yeah, I get But you. it is on YouTube as well, so if people want to see... Yeah, yeah. Mars. So yeah, they'll hear out. it like as it is, but the YouTubers they'll see me look deliciously in their eyes. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> yes. So it's like it's like a bonus. <laughs> so uh, my name is Mars from the Amazing. I'm not gonna look at the camera. Please, my- no, no, no. You've promised it. You okay. Have to. Well, my name is Mars from the Amazing. I'm a storytime animator that's been ongoing for three years now. Um, three is wrapping up soon in December. Fans of Storytime Animation will know what that means, but for those yes. who don't watch Storytime Animation or haven't come across it, what, uh, and yeah, yeah. probably wrongly, yeah. what, what is it? Well, first of all, uh, I think everyone has watched Storytime Animation now. Come on. Get me. <laughs> <laughs> no, so Storytime Animation is essentially, um, I'd say, the next step of after a vlog where in a vlog where when you tell a story about what's happened in your life, you put yourself in the camera. But I feel like visually that wasn't super interesting, except obviously exceptions like Casey Neistat, you know, the people who are forwarding it. And so storytime animation is just adding that, having that vlog element, but then adding visuals in terms of animations or animatic or vi- just pictures in front of it, to be quite honest. Awesome. And so, you know, people, you say people would have come across it. So what other sort of channels... No, people <laughs> I might know other than the Amazing. No, but yeah, <laughs> my channel first. No, yeah. um, people, it's, it's it's still a niche genre even till now. The most popular nowadays is the odd ones out, um, fifteen million, I think. But back then, I think the older ones were Domix and Swoozy. Swoozy at the time used to do storytime animation, but now he's kind of transitioned out of it back into a vlog format ish. Um, so they're probably the two biggest ones. But James, Jaden. Uh, something else, YT, Rebecca Parham, they're like the bigger animation. Still, they target younger, I don't want to say kids, not kids. <laughs> they target everybody, um, but primarily a teenage demographic most of all. So that's why I don't expect many people to know it. It's very popular within this niche compared to other genres like uh, commentary or Michael Reeves or William Osmond where it's generalizable to everyone and everyone knows it. You know what I mean? Cool. So how, like, let's, Go the origin story of Mars, the oh, Amazing. Oh, gross. <laughs> I'm not sure why it's gross. No, it's but not, like, not, tell not, us why. Not, is that gross? Too far back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, like, yeah so as a YouTube creator, like, in you know, 1997. Let's, at, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's go into the yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, hot, steamy night. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, gross. I don't want to think uh, about that. <laughs> right. Mrs. Mars and no, Mr. Right, Mars. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's, let's just, just from the YouTube version, the PG version. But yeah, like the genesis of you, of Mars the YouTuber. Yeah, um, it's really funny because initially, I, ever since I was in year seven, eight, nine, ten plus, you know, I've always wanted to do media or something creative. Uh, my initial intention was filming, acting, that kind of stuff. Um, because when I was young, I was really into theater, really into public speaking, and I was super into it. And uh, I, I told my drama teacher that, you know what I mean? I was like, you know what? I'm going to be like this actor. I'm going to be like a, maybe a director even. And he's like, yo, but like brown people don't do that though. <laughs> like he outwardly said, people won't like you because you're brown. And I was like, and I laughed at it because I was like, aha, it's Queensland. We're racist. Um, but I, I think that really did stick with me a lot because I realized like I couldn't even count. I couldn't name any like Middle Eastern, Pakistani, Indian actor at the time, which was like, 10 years ago. Now I can name like Kumal Nanjiani and a few others, but um, that defeated me immensely. 
But still, the hope was up. You know, the hope was up. In year 11 and 12, I was in the car with my parents. And my parents are very uh, brown. So when I told them that I was going to do... <laughs> <laughs> when I told them that I was going to do... I was like, yeah, I'm thinking about doing media, you know? Um, and they just straight up laughed. Because they thought I was joking. They thought it was like a joke. And I was like, oh, that goes my self-confidence right there. So I went to uh, another course in uni. And it was hap- I was happy with it. I don't, I don't want to sound like I hated it or anything. But when I uh, was in uni, two years in, at the end of the second year, I was like, man, I'm doing well, but I'm still not like, I still regret that I didn't do it. You know what I mean? So I started making videos in my second year. I was just making, not the animations, yeah. that came after. I made comedy skits. I made sketches. I made anime reviews. Um, I didn't like anime reviews because I didn't like editing. Editing's annoying for me. I really, I'm just pedantic and I got copyright struck every single time. So I was like, this is just annoying. And the comedy sketches were fine, except I, I do swear. And my parents found out, they're like, oh, you you put shame on the family, you know, that kind of bull, bull crap. And so, and, and so it essentially it was like a bunch of conditions, right? Which one, one of them was I had to be anonymous. So my parents didn't see it and find out and stuff and i couldn't swear because my baby brother watched my sketch and i didn't like the feeling of that it mm. made me feel kind of gross and it, I, I didn't want to edit either and i was like what do i enjoy <laughs> you know what do i actually like and i thought uh, it was storytelling i love telling stories i just did that with a bunch of my friends and i was like okay i can tell stories and that's when i found Domix and james and all of them and when i watched their videos i was like okay these are cool but like I can't do that. I have I've uni, whatever. You know what I mean? They they, t- they must they might take too much time. And then Jaden Animations, she made a video where she was like, "Yeah, I'm doing like um, graphic design and more uni courses alongside my YouTube." And that like shot like guilt straight <laughs> to my heart. I was like, Ugh. you know, I'm making excuses here, like saying I'm in uni, and I kind of literally very impulsively, super impulsive. I was like playing this MMO for twelve hours a day. <laughs> Literally 12 hours a day, every day. And it was the holidays, man. Like, I, I was like, whatever, Final Fantasy 14, go for it. <laughs> Next day, I, like, cold turkey stopped, took my tablet out and just started drawing for, like, replaced my addiction with another. And 12 hours a day, I was, like, practicing for five days and then uploaded my first video. Wow. Like, like, so, you, were you, did you have drawing talent before yeah. this? So, I had a tablet only. So, when I say tablet, it was literally like a bamboo create. It was like a, it was like a really shoddy tablet from like 10 years back. Yeah. And the only reason I had that was because when I was younger, I drew a lot. I, I did draw a lot. Yeah. Um, and my friend told me about this animation program called Pivot which was like a stick figure animation. You know, it was, we were like fighting yeah. stick figures. It was garbage. <laughs> and then he showed me Macromedia Flash. And so <laughs> I, did, I did have very light animations done in the past. I had like three kind of animations, not really. And then I just, I had a tablet for it and I put it in the cupboard and didn't use it for five, six years. And then took it out just for this. Yeah. Um, so it was very impulsive how it started. And the very first animation on my channel is actually the very first animation I made Period. Like, that was, like, the first full-length animation. And it's atrocious. <laughs> it is abysmal. And, like, the storytelling's all right. It's just, it's very quiet. It's very mute. It's just like, hey, guys, you know, what's up? So <laughs> it's, it's me trying to be energetic, but not really being energetic. And the animation quality, I'm obviously not confident, so you, it's, like, wiggles all around. It's like, uh, I'm like, I, have, I look like I've got Parkinson's as I draw it, you know? It's definitely not, the, it's not great. Um, and so it's just been that for three years, juggling university as well as doing animation. Um, that's been my struggle, summarized into one thing. Um, and thankfully, I've met a lot of amazing creators, like a lot of amazing people along the way, because animation is just a lonely, lonely, lonely uh, art form. You just stay there for so long drawing and then having people in your ear just having a chat with you is like the best feeling ever. Did like you, now. Did you know that when you got into it? Did you have like an inkling of like... Of animation is, being lonely? Of, of the, the actual effort required to oh, create animation It's content. so funny because like the very first thing I made, like the first animation, I had the expectation that I was like, okay, in two days I'll be done with this and I can work on my next one. <laughs> and my fourth day, I literally had the urge. I was like, I want to quit. I'm done. I hate this. <laughs> um, because it just took so long and I didn't realize that. And I wasn't even adding any color. It was just black and white in the first one. Uh... And I wasn't putting too much effort in, and you can watch it, and it's clear that I'm not. Um, and it took like four full days of like effort, like no, like I ate, I slept, 
and that's it. Like I didn't even go exercise and stuff. And so, um, that was rough. Yeah, yeah, that was rough. And then I, I, as soon as I posted it though, that dopamine, that dopamine rush that comes right after uploading, I'm just like, I gotta chase that high. You know what I mean? It's like, I became like an addiction. Yeah, without a doubt. And how did the channel actually grow then? I mean, if, if you were new to animation and new to building that audience. Um, oh, th there's like a, it's, it's, it's a lot of people were like, you know, I did, I do this and I do this and people attribute it to like all these skills. No, nah, it's all luck. It, it really is. <laughs> it's, it's all, the right place at the right time. You know, I'm confident that if James w didn't do it in like the timeline he did, he J wouldn't be J as, the odd ones out. Yeah. I apologize. Yeah. The odd ones, if the, do if the odd ones out didn't upload the same way he did, he wouldn't have been as big as he is now. It's just right time. And similarly, when I started making animation, at the time, the only animators really on the on the uh, same community and genre was Domix, Swoozy, uh, the old ones that had just started, Jane Animations had kind of just started, and that's about it. Like there was just four, and so I was kind of older uh, in terms of like my age as well as like really uh, in the community. And so the second video I made was uh, when Jaden Animations hit a million subscribers. She had a live stream in which she played piano. And she's this incredibly introverted person, uh, very nervous, didn't want to show her face. She was just playing piano. And uh, th throughout the live stream, she was like, um, uh, um, um, and she kept saying, um, right? And at the time, there was also the meme by Lazy Town called We Are Number One. It's like this really sing silly song. And I thought, because I'm just trash i thought it would be really fun to make that song but replace we are number one with all the ums that she had in her video and i literally spliced it all together and i uploaded it and she was like i love this and she retweeted it she was like I, this is the funniest thing i've seen in a while that blew up and in in one month i had 100 subs and i was like what i, I just started and i had like this garbage video it's got more <laughs> views than my animation but whatever it's fine um but i also recognized that the four of them who were there, uh, Tim, Tom, and Speechy as well, there's a few others, they were all super close. Like they would stream together, they would chat with each other, they would collaborate often with each other. And I was and I was wondering like, what, how? And a bit of a ballsy move from my part, but um, I the old ones out had three million subscribers or two and a half or something. And I just emailed them. I was like, yo, how, how do you have a community already? There's like four of you, how do you find each other? <laughs> And he replied back with a super in-depth thing of like the like how to call that with people, how to actually network, where he started, Discord service to join. And Discord was like mm. the most important social media platform by far. If you want to grow on, uh, in my genre at least, or maybe even now for most YouTube genres, Discord is the way to go. Mm. All YouTubers that I've talked to have a, most, okay, most YouTubers that I've talked to have a Discord account. And so uh, I made one. And I joined the service he he wanted me to, and he was there, and I just chatted with him, and we clicked immediately, like really good friends immediately. And so, I was just friends with like one of the top animators, and I popped up in his streams a few times, and people found out about me, and I just kept uploading more and more, and I networked with more friends. And the thing is, when I say network, I n never did it with the intention of, oh, I'm gonna get some YouTube subscribers now, you know what I mean? It was always with the intention of, I just wanna make friends, you know? I wanna know these people who are in this community because it takes a lot of effort and if you're in it, I just wanna suck away your motivation and your positive vibes, you know? Maybe it is selfish, <laughs> never mind, I take it back, maybe it was selfish, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, give me, <laughs> give me your good vibes. <laughs> Vibe check. Um, and so definitely went in with like good motivations. And so it was a lot of that as well, that people who watched them were like, who is this Mars guy who's everywhere now? And so that's essentially what happened. And so in a year I hit 100,000, um, which I was super grateful for, you know, and but the thing is, when you get to when you get bigger and bigger, the the amount of effort I put in got more and more, and the audience ex expectation kept growing growing as well. But also, so did my university expectations. Like the amount of work I had to do for that also grew, and so it, it was essentially it's two giant time consuming things that kept growing, and it was getting more and more difficult to juggle them. And so I think this year I took. I prioritized my uni more because it was ending. I was, I was like, might as well end on a strong note. Just quickly, what are you doing at university? Yeah, so I am, uh, I was in med school. Oh God, that's weird. I was in med school, and so this is my fi this was my final year. It took a long time, and so I uploaded 
In seven months, I uploaded two videos. So, you know what I mean? Okay, so when you were, it means you finished med school. I'm, not, I'm, a, I'm a doctor now. You, you, don't, you haven't dropped out. You actually finished. Oh, yes. I'm a do- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot. I didn't even yeah. think about that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm a doctor now. Yeah. Yeah. I've uh, finished med school. Yeah. Uh, graduations happened. Yeah. I, I'm so excited just to be able to call you Dr. Mars. I'd see that that's... <laughs> yes. You know what's the craziest thing, though? It's like uh, I was buying some flight tickets, and you know how you had the drop down yeah. with Mr. Missile? I was like, oh, shit. Like, <laughs> so yes. I Dropped down to doctor. I was like, no, bro. And so I had to put Dr. Mars in. Yes. Uh, a mate of mine, he was telling me a story about how he went to Japan. And, uh, it, you know, after graduation, because he's like, I'm going to just drink and have a good old time. And then in the trip, the lady, uh, there was a lady in front of him who had a seizure. And then the flight attendant was like, is there any doctors aboard? He's like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, cause, so he stood up and he, you know, he did what he needed to. But yeah, it's, it's the scary world that... Yeah. I'm a doctor now. Yeah, yeah, you're on call all the time now. Every time you're on a flight, you'll uh, be like, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, please, please don't. Like, <laughs> no, no, no. So it's like, that's been rough. I think, like, that's been rough because the final year and the second to last year in mine are super difficult, like, time consuming. Literally, like, in some times this year, I, I would go in at 6 or 7 a.m. and leave at 6 p.m. So it's like, any time I had was like, as soon as I got home, I would eat dinner, right? And so it was like 7 o'clock to 10 maybe of work. And so it would take me months to finish a video, like a long, long, long time. And it, it definitely not like definitely not what the audience deserves, you know. Um, and they were super sweet. Like I, I, can, I keep making behind the scenes. And in one of them, I was like, I feel like I'm putting a lot of effort in my visuals. And it's taking a lot of my time. And one of the guys wrote, like, I subscribe because I like your storytelling. You could have stick men for all I care and I'd still watch it. And I was like, you know, I like yeah. that. That's like real nice. Um, but thankfully I'm done. With and medicine. With medicine. <laughs> yeah, with life. No, <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, with medicine. And so uh, I've been like really pumping out videos. Like in the last month I put two compared to seven months I put two. So i um, really happy with that. I've, I'm growing my team out. You know, I have I had six employees. Now I have 10. And so... Um, some of them are background artists, some of them are editors, some of them are um, compositional in, in-betweeners. So just expanding that out as well. Working on merchandise, you know, which is like I just did not have time for that, yeah. you know. But, well, actually. <laughs> hey. Oh, no. uh, is that Christmas merch? Yeah, it's like Christmas merch. <laughs> no, uh. so it's it, 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 it's just really comfy, to be quite honest. Um, and it's mine. a chance to plug it. Yeah, yeah. It looks good. It looks great. Yeah. It's little, Thank you. It's, like, it's just snowman. my little snowman. Yeah, yeah it's, a Mar- it's, a, it's a Mars snowman. I went, yeah. I went to get a Mars. Hang on, Bitcoin, stand up. I wanna, I wanna, yeah. Snow Mars. St- stand up. Snow Mars. Yeah. <laughs> Just show on the camera. You can check yeah, that one out. When on I went to over your store at VidCon, you'd sold a lot of shirts in my size. I had I was only left by a bag. I, uh, I had to get like a badge. Fred, I felt bad. Fred's just just you know <laughs> just looking for a freebie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, well, <laughs> that's a really nice it, looking take jumper take you've got on there. Take it off, man. That's what I meant. Can I wear that? jumper? Are we the same size? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> it was like like that. You just mug me on <laughs> on camera. No, no, we'll wait till the interview's over. We'll get out. We'll, we'll get you. Don't you worry. Yeah, the the VidCon thing was super interesting. Um, I just wasn't expecting anything, to be quite honest with you. Um, and I I don't know whether it's imposter syndrome or it's just how I've been raised. I just don't think of myself still as a YouTuber. Not really. Like I say it, like I'm a YouTuber because I do YouTube. But when I say this person's a YouTuber, I think of like you know having fans diehard fans are like and then you know watch the content like crazy i don't think about that for me and so when i went to vidcon and i had that merchandise booth that was just for me it was just a way to have a cool space to hang in that's why the other half of it was just a hangout space because i wanted to hang there with my fans um and i also i guess i just uh undershot my demographic because i bought a lot of um s's you Mm. know s s and uh like maybe a few m's uh, not many L's, not many XL's. All of the XL's, L's, and M's sold out. I'm like, well, now, now I've just got like a bunch of S's that no. <laughs> I guess I just undershot, you know. Yeah. Um, I didn't realize that they would be older, so that's just my own. I did. I, I just didn't have time to understand my own audience, you know. Um, for me, my motto's always just been: I'll make stories that I want to tell. If you want to listen to it, go for it. If you don't, that's fine. I'll still make videos, you know. So because of that, I, I feel like there's like a little bit of a disconnect between me and my own understanding of my I mean, audience. Like I like how you, you you said you know this 
having a stand at, at VidCon was about your uh, like engaging with your fans and seeing what happens. Mm-hmm. But we first we first met because you were embarking on a, a similar journey. For probably, I think for the first time, um, YouTube put us put us in touch and said, "Hey, can you help?" Yes. Out here. Yes. Oh so, my gosh. Yeah. 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 How we met. So, uh, like, can, instead of me saying, like, can you tell us what what was that? Like, you, yeah. got, you and and again, it goes back to that. It's like how that much animator a that animator uh, community that you've got as well. The animation. Yeah. It's like how much a mother. You know. It's like how much aunt. Yeah. 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 Um. Uh, essentially, I'm just super forward. Like, I really like thinking about future plans. Right. I never am satisfied with one source of revenue or one source of um, engagement. You know. Um, that's why I love live streaming. That's why I love really experimenting with new features like premieres and stuff. I really do love all of that. And I felt like, um, the next expansion of this kind of animation thing is touring around Australia. And another thing I was frustrated by was the fact that every animator and most of my audience was in the U S you know what I mean? There weren't that many Australian based creators who were making animations and stuff. There was like me, Sultan sketches and Alex's corner. So three of us. And that kind of annoyed me. It was just like hundreds in the U.S. Literally, when I went to VidCon U.S., there were hundreds of people. And like maybe four, maybe five in Australia. And I was like, you know what? We need to actually make ourselves really well known. And I, because uh, Sultan has a different bunch of demographic. Alex's Corner has a different demographic. And I have a different demographic. And I was like, we should combine us, make like a one branding push as, like an Austra- as the Australians. And so I always wanted to go and tour with them. I always wanted to go on tour full stop. And then they, with them and being involved was just a natural step. And so I talked to Suze about it. I was like, Suze, Susan, my partner manager. And I was like, I, this is my intention. This is what I want to do. I feel like this has a really strong potential of going well, um, especially with the demographic and merchandise and everything, like in terms of future. What do you think? And she's like, I know these guys. You know, I know these guys that will hook you up, all right? They know their stuff. They've done uh, stuff everywhere in, in, like, in Australia and New Zealand. Like, I'll email it. And then she did, you know, to her word. And then that's how we met in terms in, in email, yeah. like, not formally. I love the story you, you told me, though, because you said, I think Sultan had done it, uh, a fan meet and greet the year mm-hmm. before. <laughs> and you were like... And that was why you were reaching out. You were oh, like, "How did I forget?" You were that? like, "We can't." And that was the conversation oh. I think we had on the phone. Was like, "I'll get involved, but we can't do what happened last time." Oh time. yeah, I no, want that to step was... this up a level. And so, like, that's right. what I wanted. To really, like, I don't, you know, did, you know, great. We got to meet. But yeah, it was yeah. like, yeah, like that story. That's a nightmare. Where you wanted to take it. Yeah. So impact. the so the thing is like very much. I've always had this in the back of my mind. And Sultan, when he hit 500,000 subscribers, he was like, you know what? I'm going to hold a fan meetup in Melbourne. And I was like, great. And he's like, Mars, you want to be a part of it? I was like, absolutely would love to. You know what I mean? He's my mate. I'll support him. And uh, he holds it in like on the weekend of the Australian Open, <laughs> which is already like, oh, what are you, okay, what are you, okay, whatever. Um, and I was like, where is it going to be held? And he's holding it in like this random dinghy park <laughs> right outside the Australian Open. So I was like, what? Uh, and so he's like underneath a tree. And he's like, this is what we're going to hang, this tree. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> whatever, bro. And so we get there. And uh, it's 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 pretty dingy. Um, but I was like, Sultan, where's the tables and stuff? He's like, what do you mean? I was like, you promised your fans 500 chicken nuggets. <laughs> Where are the tables and stuff? And he's like, I, I, I don't have any. So I was like, what are you going to do? And so he just takes out like a twister mat, puts it on the ground of the park, <laughs> and then just puts the chicken nuggets onto the mat. I was like, Sultan, what, the f- what is this? And so the fans come and... He, he literally tells them, like, two chicken nuggets each. And I was like, bro, ain't nobody going to listen to that, man. Like, nobody's going to listen to that at all. And so uh, Salt and I are meeting fans, and we look, and there's no chicken nuggets left. We missed out on our own chicken nuggets. And I'm like, you, you suck. This sucks. <laughs> and and so there's like, some of the fans are feeling left out. They're not, like, super confident about meeting us. And... Overall, I was like, this is fun. Like, it was fun yeah. just to meet fans, but it was not run well. Uh, and I was like, Salt, we're going to, this is like a s- zero step, but this sucks. <laughs> <laughs> like, we're going to be better than this. And we need at least a chair for them to sit on and for us to actually do something, you know. So that's what it is. Yeah, it, it, got, it, it was very much prompted by his 
lack of care <laughs> and organizational ability. Yeah. yeah. And then you stepped it up. So what did, what happened? What did you Yeah. Guys so do? what I ended up doing was um, obviously the cost has to be low. We're just starting out. And um, we had three of us, Sultan, Alex, and I. And Sultan uh, and I are in Mel- Melbourne based, and uh, Alex is Brisbane based. So she flew down, and we just hired out like a. Um, this is before VidCon US. So we hired out a uh, university, like a like a little lecture theater, and in the lecture theater, which was perfect because it had a huge projector, which is what we wanted, a lot of seats that, so that they they can see us, and we held like a. Initially, we held a trifecta of having a chat with them, you know, like actually introducing ourselves in case the demo, in case the audience were familiar with one or two of us, we can introduce ourselves so they can at least know how our mojo is together. As soon as that was done, we played games, you know, so the most popular one was one where because we're story time animators and we draw with stories. Uh, one of us would be an angel, one of us would be a devil, and the third one would be going around the audience and the the audience, the guy would be like, okay, so who do we, how do we start the story? And somebody would be like, oh, there's a toad named Fred, you know, and that's how we would start. <laughs> and the angel's job is to make the story go into a negative direction, draw that. Um, and the, uh, that's the devil's job, sorry. And the angel's job is to make it into a positive direction. So we would ask like, what's something bad that happened to, what's something good? And he's like, oh, he got hired as a baker and he's like <laughs> running a super good bakery in New York. And we would draw that real quick. And then the negative is like, oh, all his bread has mold. And he's got like infestation of termites. You know what I mean? And then that would awesome. keep, it would keep going. And then the angel would be like, okay, what, what happened? It's like, oh, the mold is like super rare and really valuable when sold to like the black, like the black market. And then the negative is like, oh, he got his organs taken from the back. You know what I mean? Like, we, it would be like, it would always just escalate and de-escalate. And it was like super, super fun. Um, really, really enjoyed the event. And then we ended it off with, um, initially we had it with everyone meet, uh, was able to meet and greet us. We found that that drained us immediately. You know, meeting 150, 250, 300 people it took two hours and it really just sapped us up. Mm-hmm. As we were driving back home, Alex and Sultan slept on the, like, the, uh, no, Alex just straight up slept. <laughs> Sultan, as we were walking to dinner, he was like, my eyes aren't focusing anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and so we, we were way too tired, right? And so for the next iterations, we made it so that there was ticketing tiers. And so meet and greet was a bit more pricey. And then everybody else was just the regular base tier. Brilliant. Yeah. And you guys did a bit of custom merch for that as yes, well? Yes, we did. So we we uh, we made custom merch for it, sold pretty well. And then we also, for the new events, we invited more Australian creators. So Wolfie Chu and Jordan Suido, they're, more, they're also animation, but also music as well. So we were kind of expanding the animation reach. And so they came in, they had their merch, they had their own thing. Um, and added a new element into the show, and it was fantastic. Really, really enjoyed that quite a lot. So good, such a a, a big step from a twister mat with five hundred nuggets oh. in the, un, under some tree. Yeah, yeah, somewhere. just a random tree. <laughs> uh, it's awesome. Fred, let's take a quick break here and just give ourselves a big plug. We are super excited by this new initiative. We have created the Changer Creator College. The Creator College, quite simply, is a place where you can get a whole bunch of online courses, including our brand new Accelerate course for YouTube, designed to help emerging and new creators become even better on the world's biggest video platform. The reason we think it's pretty good is that it's not just our opinions, but the opinions of a bunch of really great creators and experts coming together to give you a very logical structured course damn right it is the college just for creators so check it out at changercollege.com that's c-h-a-n-g-e-r college.com so just i mean you talked about your audience before and the demographic i mean i started watching a lot of your old stuff and then sort of up and onto the new oh, stuff yeah, and a lot of it sort of comes out of i guess about when you were quite a bit younger and what happened to you and so forth and do you find that that audience growing with you, or are you leaving that audience behind? What? How does that work exactly? I, I feel like it's it's both. I, I don't want to be like super into like oh, I'm the best, but it's like it, it is what it is. So, um, I my motto with my channel is that I only tell stories that I would tell people now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, I would tell a story about how I hurt my brother, and I would still I would tell a story about how I shoplifted. Like those are stories that I feel like they're fun to tell, even to people my age. Mm. And so what I find is that. People are finding my channel and they're sticking with it because it's still stories I would tell people my age, so in their 20s. But also the younger people who find my channel, 
they also stick around because they're just it's just visuals are entertaining mm. and they're entertained by how I tell stories and so it's both um the people who drop out um leave are more so drop out because they just there's just so much competition animation now mm. that there's like hundreds of us and so if they find people who are better suited to what they want um then that's fine i'm also a, a rarity in the animation community where i'm not an introvert mm. i'm very extroverted uh, uh, and so I kind of portray that in my videos. I just yell a lot and I'm like very energetic. Whereas some of the other, most of the animators are more introverted, more calm, you know, kind of dainty. I don't use dainty is not the right word, but, um, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> yeah, but they're just very quiet, you know, and that's okay. So as long as people find what they want to watch that, I have no problem. And once again, like, I don't actually mind it if people don't watch or watch my videos like when people introduce themselves sometimes they would be like i've only seen one of your videos i'm like dude honestly i expect zero so that's like <laughs> one more than what i expected because i really don't um the reason i can talk to people like nothing is because i don't have any expectations about youtube in terms of what you should be what you shouldn't be you know i make content but i'm still like a dude who has to eat and pay tax and sleep you know there's like nothing different really so I don't know. It's just how it, how it is for me. Audiences can come and go. I'll still make videos. And um, with the video, was there ever one that you did? You were like, "This is this is the be- this is the one." Oh, okay. Yeah. So I thought you were going to go the good the- side. I'm going to go the other way. So <laughs> <laughs> you start posit- it's like positive side. Grimacing. Yeah. Um, I think it's like every new video that I make. You know, every new yeah. video make- that I make, I'm just like, yeah, I'm really happy with how this turned out because yeah. obviously the. Um, the, the quickest way to improve is practice. Mm-hmm. And the way you practice is by doing it hundreds, hundreds of times. And in a video, I'll draw my character thousands of times. And so every video, you can just see improvement straight up. Mm. And so every video that I make now, it's just so much better than my previous. And so I love that more. Um, simultaneously, for both good and bad, the one video that I was like, this is going to blow up is the one I did with James. I hate it and I love it at the same time. Because... I'm also incredibly analytical. I l- look at my analytics every day and really understand it. If there's a new statistic, I will test it and I will find it and I will make it work for me. So when CTR came out, I was like, oh, yeah, I love this. <laughs> you know, it's like the best thing ever. And so um, at the time, oh my God, this is going to sound like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sound like a super nerd, yes. right? <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, at the time, out. the odd ones that was blowing up. You know what I mean? He also had, he was super, super nice. Like he emailed me this entire thing, which was an extension of his personality. He just wanted to help people out at the time. He's way too busy now. Um, at the time, he also collabed with anybody who emailed him with a decent request. He's like, hey, I'm growing. Do you mind if you voice a few characters? He's like, yep, go for it. And he just recorded it and sent it immediately. Wow. You know what I mean? Really, really nice guy from a guy with like 4 million subscribers at the time. And I was friends with him for like a year and I was like, oh, man, I don't want to ask you. I don't want to ask you. You're going to roast me to oblivion. And so I was like, yo, man, do you mind if you voice a cute character? He's like, yo, this guy using me for subs? He's like roasting me <laughs> yeah. for it. Um, and so, but the thing was, it was very calculated. So at the time, I was not, um, I was 10,000 subs. My friends were 20,000, 30,000. A few of my other friends, like Laddie, Turtle Amigo, et cetera. And I kind of was like, hey, y- you should have me in your videos. Not because of like, not because like I want to grow, but because I'm going to collab with James, and it, this video is going to blow up, and I, I'm also going to make videos with you in it, and then we should like do that. So we were literally like sitting and planning upload schedules so they would coincide with each other, and so that's what we did. We collab with each other, linked each other in terms of audiences' minds, um, and with the video with James, I always have this one rule, right, which is that I always tell stories that I tell would tell my friends, except this one <laughs> the story i decided to tell was how i cheated in school and i knew i knew with his audience and i knew with my audience that that topic would do super well mm. i just knew that right i also knew that if he was in it it would do well and i knew that as well and i also knew because he was my friend that his video with the fine brothers was coming out at a certain date and so i was like i'm gonna post it right there all right and so all of this planning and the video I did before this was I, I did it with Tim Tom, which was a rap battle. And I knew music with a established creator would also do well. And so that did well, which set a good precedent for my next video, which was going to be this one. I'm so sorry to YouTube algorithm. <laughs> and so literally as soon as that video comes out, 
like blows up. Um, I go from 10,000 to 60, 70,000 subscribers in like a week. Um, that video now has 6 million views. It's like the highest view, viewed video on my channel by far. But I'm so, I'm not proud of it because it's a story that I would never tell now. I would never tell that story. I, it was just to blow up, but it's, it feels artificial. And so one of my goals now in my mind is I want to make a video that beats that video with my own merit. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, screw you, James. And he he keeps holding it over my head as well. <laughs> He's like, yo, you're the big because of me. I made you, Ooh. bro. <laughs> no, I love him. He's like one of my best friends, but he's just an absolute twat sometimes. <laughs> but strategically, very, very clever. Like, yeah. play there. Like, you know, it was a very multifaceted. Yeah. Multi-month. Yeah. Like, that well rewarded like you know yeah. for, for the, not just the content but you know and it's it's really funny because when i was growing all the people that i collab with like in this operation we stopped growing yeah no, no <laughs> they, they like went detracted they actually oh, right. decreased oh, no, right. <laughs> no um they grew as well and so all of us now have over a hundred thousand subscribers which is awesome because yeah. they're like my homies i grew up with them in terms of youtube um and it was, it was like, uh, it was, I wasn't trying to manipulate or play it. The, well, I was playing the game, but it was just, it, it's exactly that. You're, it's YouTube as a game and you just play it in a certain way, you know? Mm. But yeah, like, I mean, that was a, a great catalyst for you and a great accelerator, but uh, that audience has grown and stuck around mm -hmm. since then. So it's not just built off a, a one trick pony or That's one, one, you know, at, at you the don't time. spend, I don't think you spend all your time really <laughs> thinking of, which collaboration and content you should do and to shoehorn to grow and your audience, right? Like it's, uh, it's. I guess we kind of sort of need to put that to bed as well. It's not 100%. just like, here's a silver bullet, collaborate with someone who's big on a topic yeah. that will trend at a time will trend and off you go, right? Yeah. Like you, you, your content isn't. I feel about like that. that's like super understated. So I'm really glad you brought that up because when I collab with him, it was not because like, oh, I'm going to grow real quick. It was because I always collaborate with my friends. And he's like one of my best friends, you know, and I was like, I either collab now or in the future, but in the future, I'm going to get more awkward about it. Cause as you know, I was just like, let's just get it done. Let's get it over with. Cause he, I was in his videos and I was like, and now I feel bad that he, you're not in mine. And so I was like, okay, whatever I will, I will, let's do it. And so, but it was also now that it was happening, I had to play it smart. You know what I mean? But also the reason that I collab at 10,000 subscribers was because I knew that there was an established fan base who were going to watch after the f after this fact. There's so, so, so many channels in like our community who just like collab with James who thought it was a silver bullet who would grow and completely fail afterwards because the, algorithmically, if you do blow up, you know, some of them did blow up. Algorithmically, y YouTube looks at the video that blew up and it has like 70,000 views now. Every other video has like a thousand views max, right? And so it's like the next video, YouTube's like, okay, we'll do almost as well as this one, right? And then it dips back down to like 2,000, maybe 3,000. And it's like, oh, I guess it's not going to do as well. And it's like a downward spiral for them, right? If you're going to do the, the collaborate with a big YouTuber, you've got to be able to sustain that after the fact, you know? It's definitely not a one-way ticket. Way more to do it, way more to it than that, no. Um it's actually higher chance of your channel dying when you collab with a big YouTuber because if you can't sustain the views, like in a certain level anyway, probably not worth it. Yeah. Yeah. So what you're saying there is be able to continue to create high yeah. quality content that 100%. that audience is want. So have something. So did you have something in the chamber ready to go for the next one, or mm -hmm. did you, you had it like because anim like I guess we haven't really talked about that yet, but animation is a long game in terms of creating content. Super long. Did, so you had one ready. You had the next. I had the next one ready, but I was not going to upload until three weeks to a month later. Yeah. Um, and even with the James one, that took two months to do. And the closest I've ever come to quitting YouTube was before that video. Like that video, I was like, I literally was like in a, in a, like getting some HSP with my mates, you know? And I was like, man, I know if I upload this, it will blow up and I will grow as a YouTuber and I'll feel the expectation. I know that. Mm. I could quit now. I could be happy that I could have done YouTube. I've already de uh, delved into the world and become a doctor. I could do it. And they're like, no, you won't. You're absolutely not going to stop here, bro. Shut the <laughs> hell up. Don't even play with us. And I was like, all right, you're right. You're right. And so I uploaded it. Um, but I had a video ready to go after as well. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, and I've just been continuing since, you know, it's been a few years. And there's been a few videos that I'm not like super happy about, but 
you know, I just keep them up, whatever. I think that's every YouTuber. You look at your catalog and you're like, okay, I didn't like that video. I didn't like that video, whatever. Yeah, I mean, as an animator though, um, it's hard, right? You're saying you're spending sometimes months doing a video mm -hmm. um, and YouTube sort of, it's a platform where like people who view YouTube really want to see a lot of what they love. Mm -hmm. And if you're an animator, you can only put out so much. Yeah. How, how, what's it like dealing with that? Yeah. So there's like two challenges there, right? So with the animation, if you make a video, if you make a title, uh, sorry, a topic that misses, you're missing for months. Mm. You know, like that's like potentially two months of bad content or people not watching your stuff. And then you can get the new one out. Um, but I feel like uh, animation also plays on a, uh, a central kind of theme of evergreening where when you make an animation, if you do it well, like what every animation storyteller should do, is make a story that's generalizable and applicable no matter when you view it. Because a video that you watch now of Jaden Animations five years ago, it's still as applicable and watchable today as it was five years ago. A video you watch about a commentary five years ago is what, talking about Leafy is here or something? I don't know, right? <laughs> yeah. No one watches that. Yeah. No one goes back to watch that, really. Except like Idubs, but he's obviously a huge exception. exception. But Evergreen is like a huge component. And so when somebody finds one a channel, they don't just stop at watching one because there's so little content, they watch all of it. And there's like data to back that up. People just honestly go back in time. And so with an animation storyteller or anybody who posts videos rarely, you got to make your catalog on your YouTube channel super succinct and really like app appetizing. Like any video you can click on and we'll get gr good content, you know? So... Yes, it takes a while, but it's uh, for us, it's a different game where it's like a snowball, you know? Starts really slow, money is real slow, and the more videos you have, the greater the exponential growth it is because people keep watching all of it back and back and back, and so it literally snowballs the more video I have, and so does the revenue, so does the views, so does the subscribers. It's just a, it's just a game of uploading as much as you can, as, as, as most YouTubers have, you know? Mm. Yeah. By being an animator, that it, that's a constraint then that, almost forces you to create quality evergreen content, which is mm -hmm. a good thing to have, mm -hmm. right? Like uh, other creators in other, in other, you know, form uh, other mediums, if they, if they did that would mm -hmm. see the same results most likely as mm -hmm. well. So, 100%. but then reaps its rewards later. It's that, yeah. it's a brilliant thing. So it's like when people say like, Oh, go with the trending stuff. I'm like, no, nah, not even, you know, yeah. some of them can work like ASMR, um, TikTok. Those things are not going to die for a while. Um, I'm doing a video about team trees. It, the The campaign might not last, but the impact of it will, you know. So that that's like so evergreen. You, you can play around with it. You don't have to just be like school is fun, you know. Like you don't have to just go too super super bland. But um, it it does have its own challenges. And I feel like now that I've got more time, I'm playing around with the concept of story time animation as well. So what my newest video, the reason I was able to upload two in a month was because what I did was I animated the first three minutes of it um, with a concept, you know, which was just that. I have, I have two videos in the past about how I was friend zoned by a girl, mm. super into her, you know, and she just was not into it, you know. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to bite the bullet. This is content. So I uh, got on a call with her and made her watch the videos oh, really? with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like those videos. Those, yeah. Those and yeah, and yeah. so she watched it and it's so cringe. It, you, really? It's just 18 minutes of me going like, oh, oh you know, like her. Oh. Like, and she it, like she paused the video uh, and certain parts. And she's like, remember when you used to sing to me? And literally the next, I was like, oh, don't play the video. <laughs> and she plays it. And, she, and then it's me saying it. And I was like... I hate myself. Um, so that's really fun. And so the first three minutes of was me summarizing the story, recapping it. And I was like, I don't know why I did this. I suck. And transition onto the IRL. And the IRL video stuff are just time-wise, it's much easier to edit that than my animation. And because I gave a little, um, a little entrance almost, like the people who like my animation watched it, they understood the concept, and they were willing to transition to the IRL video and watch mm. the IRL video. Mm. And I definitely plan on doing experimenting with that a bit more, you know? a two three minutes intro of me going like hey i have this concept really wacky like i tweeted out once that i when i make sweet potatoes i put it all in a cup mm. and i just i just pick out from the cup it's super super weird and i was like you guys tell me your own weird stuff and people gave me cursed food combinations like cheese and ramen which apparently is really good 
so I might try that out. But ketchup and potato uh, and uh, and popcorn and stuff, yeah. like nasty, right? Yeah. And so I want to do a video where I transition from the intro where I just explain what I did, and then transition on me cooking these cursed stuff and eating it, you know, and re- giving a rating. Speaking like, of cursed food, Matt Tabor was saying from Vsauce and the Create Unknown was saying the other week. They're working on this project, and you thought, you know, there's this wacky combination of Vegemite and melted cheese. There I'm is. Like, That's wacky, and I'm like, dude, I That's, had that last night as a it's toasty sandwich, ever. and he's like, no, you didn't. Yeah. <laughs> like, so I, I took a photo, like the other the other night, I had a late night snack. I took a photo of it, sent it to him. We're like, yeah, sorry, I just had to segue to that. No, hundred percent. It's dude, a, that is not wacky food. That no, is like a legit meal. That's like what I eat all the time. Totally. Ugh. Butter, cheese, and Vegemite. And we know Matt listens to this podcast, so Matt, it's not just me. <laughs> this is real. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. little segue there. Sorry. <laughs> Speaking of actually <laughs> real footage and food, like that mango one you did. Um, oh, like yikes. With, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like that was interesting because that was the first time I'd seen where you sort of just slipped out of it and went into eating the mango. And mm-hmm. I thought it was very interesting the way you did that. Just eating the mango? Eating them, yeah. Just peeling it peeling and, it and, and like, just like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I thought, oh, because I think that was when I thought, oh, wow, you actually are a, you're a generally a good storyteller because even outside mm-hmm. of the animation world, you'd still captured all that attention and interest and the star was still there. Mm-hmm. Um, like well, when you, in developing, I'm first probably explain that and to, in developing that. Kind yeah. of this is a video what? of me eating a mango. Yeah, <laughs> it pretty much is. Yeah. 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 Um, so that video was actually made out of, so it's a video called, ha- is the story time animation getting stale? Mm. Right. Um, and it was born out of frustration because there were all these online critics, right. Who were out going like, you know, story time animation is going to die. It's bad because of this and this and this. The backgrounds aren't good enough and this is not good enough and this is not good enough. And look, I get it, right? I get it. Anybody can be a critic. Seriously, anybody can. And that's okay. But a lot of the criticism was not, was not, um, was not keeping into mind that everybody has a different style. You know, when you detract points for having a back, not having a background or having a background, perhaps their style allows for them to not have a background you know what i mean like stylistically there are differences and and uh, they they also i don't want to sound like you you need to have experience in a field to criticize it but having experience in a field allows you to understand the limitations that comes with that field like before i did animation i thought two days was enough to make one (laughs) no (laughs) um and so i was like okay i feel like i can summarize a lot of this and counter with them you know and i was also inspired by anthony fantano's uh, who's needle drop? He makes a series called "Let's Argue," where he just asks for controversial opinion and he argues against them. <laughs> and so I wanted to do that. And a lot of them were like, "Hey, how do you grow on YouTube?" So general advice and what would you recommend? But also controversial stuff like, "I feel like YouTube animation is gonna die because it's getting stale." And I agreed with that because it is getting stale only because instead of people going out and finding their own style and reinventing the wheel, people find it. Uh, People find people think that it's successful if they copy uh, an already established creative style. Like after Casey Neistat made his vlog, how many Casey Neistat <laughs> mm. copycats were there? Hundreds, you know. Did they succeed? Thousands. Yeah, right. <laughs> and so it's just like, of course, there's going to be stale copycat channels, right? But you also got to give them time to grow and find their style. If for my first year of my content, it wasn't really me in terms of my own personality, and so recently I found it. And with that video as well, I found, I, I realized that during recording, I was just like, people haven't seen this analytical side of me in a video, you know, not really. So might as well add some level of silliness to it and just eat a mango. You know what I mean? And so I literally, and I know people hate it when I eat a mango. I, I tweet about this all the time. I, I find carnal joy in eating foods that are not meant to be eaten in the wrong way. So mangoes, I just peel them and have like a big bunch in my hand. I just like take a big bite and it's like it's like disgusting but i love it it's same with an avocado i've done that once in front of my friends i'll peel an avocado and they're like don't do it don't do it and i just take a big chunk of avocado and i put sriracha sauce on it oh. <laughs> yeah yeah beautiful guacamole Portable uh, snack. yeah yeah, yeah. Portable guacamole. and the kiwi fruit oranges same thing don't cut them just eat them like that yeah, yeah. Um, and so I, I just found that that was a good way of keeping it a little lighthearted whilst tackling a lot of the negative opinions, you know, in, in, a, in a kind of informal way. Um, some people were, were like, you can't get a job as a story time animator. And it's like, well, the numbers don't lie. People have definitely got money from this, so you can. Others were like, um, uh, it's going to die in a few years, just like every other, just like animation in the past. And 
I could see that happening if there was an algorithmic change. But um, the top animators, they're in Google Preferred. They're promoted high heaven by VidCon. They get so much money in views that I just don't think it'll be in like YouTube's best interest to cut them down, really. Mm. Um, so, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful, but I also understandably um, pessimistic about the staleness of it because people are emulating it and it is saturating it. And big companies are jumping into it. Have you heard about Shaq Tunes? Oh. Yeah, Shaquille O'Neal is now hiring oh. animators and stuff to make his stories into animated story, animated uh, story times. Um, but the thing is, he has no storytelling ability whatsoever. If you he listen to a story, sucks. yeah, and it's really boring. I saw Shaq at like some wearable tech presentation at South by Southwest years ago. I was like, yeah, Shaq about wearable <laughs> tech with like the head of someone from Nike. Like, I like I walked out within like two minutes because Shaq was boring. He should just <laughs> stick to dunking balls. Like, <laughs> And that's it. Like, who's, uh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Shaq. Yeah. Like, he's a big listener of ours, so I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, so, I'm sorry, sorry Shaquille O'Neal. Yeah, so, like, he was moving in, and it, there was controversy because he was only paying <sighs> all the animators in total $500, which is just not enough for a full, like, it, for me, it takes six seconds. To animate six seconds of my video takes an hour. Mm. Um, so a full a minute takes 10 hours. A full 10-minute video takes 100 hours to just make a video, you know, minimum. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so you're paying 100 hours Five hundred dollars, which is five dollars an hour, That's which ridiculous. it's ridiculous. And so he got super flack for it. Logan Paul made a story time animation, and he's like hiring a team to do that as well. Um, uh, C- Coffee Man, Cool Dan, Eddie Burbank, like a-, a lot of the people, they're kind of maybe not Eddie Burbank, but uh, Coffee, <laughs> they're all kind of trying to dip their toes into like big media companies as well, and. I feel like that's where it's gonna go. People are gonna finally, like, legitimately look at it and be like, "They're getting so many views. Might as well jump into it." And they're trying, but it's harder than it looks. You know, yeah. y- animation's a genre in which you can get into it for success, and that's fine. Literally, all to you. I'm, I'm more than keen for having more people in it. But it's also a genre unless you genuinely enjoy it, unless you really like making the content, it will burn you out like that. You know, it is so long, very little rewards for the first year or so. Uh, making money from it, making money from it. Oh, so I, I made this video. I made my channel before the YouTube partnership program limitations. So thankfully, I was in it already before they added it in. But the thousand subscribers is fine. The four thousand watch hours for an animation video is so hard, mm. like really difficult, um, because maximum five minutes or ten minutes a month, and then you had to get four thousand watch hours or four hundred watch hours. One of them, insane. So a new new creators found it really difficult to jump into. Really, really difficult. Mm. Well, look. Speaking of that, like let's talk about process uh, as well. Mm-hmm. Um, like, can you explain your, as an animator your process, especially now that you've done it for a while? Do you you know you think of a story like you in real life you'll see something happen before your eyes? Does mm-hmm. that or make it start translating into your mind? Oh, I can make that like an um, animation. Very rarely does that happen. Like okay. very very rarely. When I started my animation channel, I literally just made a list of all the stories I tell my friends. That's that's it. That's all of uh, all of my stupid stories that I tell. And I had like 70. Mm. I had 70 stories of a list and they're all really 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 good. And I'm st- I still use that list, you know. Recently I just take that list and I make it in a house time my brother. I had a fake birthday. Somebody pranked me by like stealing my stuff. And like you know, like all these really odd stories in my life because it just generally a bit about me f- is that I've lived in four countries. Every two years, every year or two years, I would move into a different city, different school. And so I would always get new experiences by these weird people in my life. And so it, it it's exposed me to a lot. And so I wrote them all down. The only time I would make a story re- about recent things is if it's either time limited or just very wacky. Mm. So the Team Trees thing is r- very recent. He invited me on before it went live. So I've been working on that for like really quickly, really, uh, you know, as that was happening. And the TikTok video I made recently was just, it was just so bizarre how I started TikTok and how I blew up on TikTok and how I've now become a TikToker alongside all of this. Because it, the journey was so bizarre. I met like a few celebrities. I got involved into a secret party. <laughs> it, it was just like a really weird wreck. And I also realized that TikTok's growing now really quickly. So I was like, time-wise, it probably would be best to plant this now rather than in the future. But I, 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 don't, I won't run out of stories for maybe a 
few years. Yeah, I've got so many. <laughs> and do you see people and go, that would be a good character? Like, do you look at Ant and go, he'd be a really oh, interesting... He'd be a decent character. character. Yes, character. <laughs> the yarn, bro. Oh, the yarn. <laughs> the swell yarn with Ant. Um, once again, very rarely do I... I, I I used to watch a lot of vloggers and a lot of them burnt out or, you know, fell because they were like, they hated the idea of them thinking like a YouTuber during normal events. You know what I mean? They're like, they're eating lunch and they're like, I could record this and I could make this. And I don't, I never wanted that. And so even now when I go out for lunch, when I do something weird, never does it cross my mind. I could record this and I could make it into a story. Like I joke about it. Like, you know, one time James accidentally punched me because he was just swinging his arm. And I was like, the old ones out punch me. That's ne <laughs> that's my next story, you know? And so I'll joke about that, but never does it actually happen in real life. Uh, unless something cool happens. We went on a, uh, me and my mates went on a 20 kilometer hike recently up a mountain. I like broke my knee or something like, I didn't break my knee, but like I wore it down and I'm probably going to get arthritis in the next year or something. But um, that's probably going to be a story because it was just so many moments of like weirdness that happened. My, my friend almost fell off. Uh, we went to the top and it was fog covered. So it felt like we were going to die. It was like, it was a lot of it's, it, big moments like that will become a story. But Usually, like I don't walk around yeah. thinking about stories now. So you, you basically you live life like you would, yeah, and then you don't just spend your days trying to manufacture interesting stories. No, to to no, yourself, I, right? I, like, I feel like that's what translates. Though, if yeah. I enjoy telling the story, then that translates to it doing well, you know. Um, and yeah, I, that's why I feel like that's also why I don't feel like a YouTuber because I don't ever engage in YouTube mode. Mm. I never turn it on. <laughs> I just go out and shop and I go home and I eat like steak and I'm just like, oh, I guess I'll animate and, yeah. because I just like animating. Yeah. And so, yeah, I, I just don't think like that. I love that term, YouTube mode on. <laughs> YouTube mode on. <laughs> yeah. So what's next for you Ooh, because you're Dr. Mars, right? Uh -huh. Because Dr. Mars or uh, Animator Mars uh, yeah, or yeah. what's happening? Um... So this is like a little controversial-ish. Uh, I think I've told Aunt, Aunt about this. but um, So if, for this next year, I've taken a year off. So I'm deferring internship, meaning I won't start working as a doctor until 2021, which is fine. That's cool. Because I also didn't want the regret of doing YouTube always 50%. Because yeah. I've always done it in university. I've never given it my full attention. And so I want this year to really put my all, all, my, all, put my all in it. So 2020, all Mars. And then at the end of it, my intention was to just end YouTube oh. and then move on to become a doctor. Because I feel like a lot of people are like, hey, well, drop out of med. I love med. I love being a doctor. I actually enjoy it quite a lot. I like studying it. I like further helping people. It's very, like, full on, whereas YouTube is not full on. Uh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> very, sorry. I, I said full on. It's very, like, affronting. Like, you can see the patients and you can see the people you help, whereas YouTube, you upload it and you're just like... You know what? Oh, just clap. I'm like, uh, you just clap and you're just like, I uploaded it. People are going to see it. And you see the numbers rise, but that's it. That's it's, it's not tactile. You don't feel it. So I like med and I want to be a doctor there. And I feel like YouTube's getting to a point of effort where it's just not conducive for me to work. Like when I start working eight to eight to five, six, I'm not going to come home and animate. I'm going to go home, relax. I have a few friends I'll, I'll hang out with, socialize play games, you know, I, I, I don't want to be able to just, like, force YouTube down. Now, there's a caveat to that, right? Of course there is. I, I don't, I, would I feel okay in just sniffing my YouTube cold turkey? No, I'd hate that, you know. If there was, that's why I'm trying to pivot from, like, three-minute animation to real-life videos so that I can make it easier for me to produce, right? Those videos are easier for me to produce. It'll t it takes me two weeks, max. If I could do that, that's great. Or what I w also wanted to do was somehow make a medical um, style channel um, that is medical in nature, good for my CV. So medical in nature, but also incorporate animation so that kind of stands out as well. That would be fun to do. So if there was a way for me to make a channel or continue with this channel that is easy to produce content, I will. If not, this year will be like my final full-on rush year. I want to have one video every single month of full animation, minimum, 12. Uh, you can hold me to it. Mm. And so, and uh, I always joked when I started YouTube, I was like, I'm going to get to a million and then stop working on my YouTube, but actually might happen. <laughs> so um, it is what it is, you know, one year of Mars. Super exciting. And that started 
Two weeks ago? Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. And I've put two videos out. So yeah. I'm like, I'm a good pace. Yeah. I'm yeah. a good pace. I reckon, yeah. And we'll, you know, I think that's a, a very interesting approach, but I think uh, yeah. we'll, like, we'll might do some updates along the way. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. You know, yeah. Let's I'd, check in on that. What if I like stop way earlier? It's like, nah, I'm done. Well, <laughs> I'm done be, already. it will be a good story time animation yeah. about that one. <laughs> well, actually, I wanted to make a story where it's like at the very start of my year, it's like um, the title's like Stopping Medicine for YouTube which is like going to be a killer title, killer video. I can already imagine the thumbnail. And at the very end, if I do choose to end my YouTube, it's going to be switched. So it's like stopping YouTube for medicine, right? And this is going to be the final video on my channel. Just end it all. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Watch this space. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Watch this space. Yeah. Uh, as, as we all know, it's time to wrap it up. But we wrap it up. I want your top three tips for aspiring creators. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to give you any any other framework around that. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Top three tips. Um, I think number one for me would be just like patience. You know, I think I think nowadays, especially with YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, all social media at the at our fingertips, our attention span has collectively dropped so much. But conversely, with YouTube, you need so much patience to really do YouTube. You know. Um, you put up one video and you're like, oh, I'm going to get like a million subscribers now. And then you don't. You put another and you put another and you put another. You put a year's worth of effort and you get nothing. And that's just the YouTube game. So YouTube is literally a marathon and not a sprint. You know, you've just got to continue it for a long time. That's it. And going off of that, the second tip that I'll say is like, if you're going to spend a lot of time doing something, do it because you like it. There's so many YouTubers that I've met who are like, I'm just doing this for money or I'm just doing this because it does well. And then they hate it in like three months, you know, and it's like, well, why did you do that? You know, just like if you were going to a job and you hate cooking and you're going to work as a chef, it's like, <laughs> what, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? You know, so oh, stick with something you really enjoy and it will, I know it sounds cliche and it will feel, it will feel like fun. It won't be like work. Um, and lastly, don't be afraid to pivot. I feel like when people grow on YouTube, they feel stuck in their niche or they feel stuck in their kind of. Uh, what they're doing. They're like, oh, my audience expects this. And that's fine. Your audience will s expect a certain level of niche, you know, but you still can pivot out of it. Like Internet Historian is a great example. He initially started off with 4chan, Tumblr, like that kind of stuff. And now he's pivoting out into events, you know, Firefest and uh, now games, Fallout 76. Like he's pivoting, but still maintaining the style. And I feel like that's so necessary as a YouTuber um, to be able to understand that you can pivot out of your content as long as you maintain your branding and style, you can you can do whatever you want. There's more flexibility than you think there is. Very good tips. That's great. Dr. Mars, oh. thank you so much for joining us on Creative Generation. Uh -huh. It's been awesome. So much fun. I'm, I'm looking forward to the next 12 yeah, months of yeah. checking in on full-time yeah. Marsing. I'm gonna I'm gonna regret that. <laughs> You're gonna be like, yo, where's the twelfth video, bro? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll keep you accountable. Hashtag accountability. <laughs> good. Awesome. Thanks, Mars. No Thanks, problems bro. at all. <laughs> well, gotta say it, that was a swell yarn. <laughs> swell yarn indeed. <laughs> well, Dr. Mars has twelve months as dedicated YouTuber, so let's uh, see what he does. Hopefully it is something amazing and he sticks around. Ah, uh, he'll do something amazing. <laughs> Boom. And on that note. Goodbye. Bye. Create a generation on the mic.